All right, hello everybody. Today I have Dr. Eduardo Car uh, Carasa with me. You are you're strictly raw raw vegan, right? Yeah, seventeen years. Seventeen years. So seventeen years raw vegan. And I'm having him on the channel here today just to kind of explore why he got started into it and maybe uh, some things that you can actually do in your own life to, you know, help you yourself get healthier, more physically active and all those great things. So welcome to the channel. Well, my pleasure. Uh, I'm happy to be here with you guys and I'm happy to share a little bit, not of my story. A lot of people think it's uh, it's interesting, my story. We had a little technical errors, so let's uh, let's get started now with uh, with uh, with the interview. Uh, so uh, I grew up as a really really sick child, and when I was 17 years of age, I actually became one of the best Counter Strike players in the world. And I used to travel all around the world competing in Counter Strike. It's a computer game, the one of the most played out yeah. there. Uh, and then when I was around 22, I was like really, really sick, Di diabetic, uh, obese, about to do two surgeries and a lot of all the health issues. And I was like, I, I try to improve through the uh, allopathic medicine way, right? Taking medicines and I was about to do two surgeries. Uh, and then I got tired of medical doctors because they all looked really sick. And I went to uh, naturopathic medicine and it was like more of the same thing, but a little bit better, you know? Like, yeah. So I, I realized that I have to search to look for an answer because I didn't want to do surgery. I didn't want to cut my nose and my back because of issues. So I started looking around and I found raw foods. And at the same day, I found veganism and raw foods. And I was like, yeah, uh, you know, eating like an animal would probably not kill me. <laughs> right. Yeah. So yeah. 700,000 species on the planet live on raw foods. And I, I felt like I already tried a lot of stuff, but not eating and living more natural. Right. So I started like a raw food diet, but I lost a lot of weight. And then two months afterwards, I met the Graham's website, uh, the author of the 80th and then diet, yeah. uh, the, probably the father of the frugivore movement. And it was a blessing. Doug was right on spot with everything. And he suggested me afterwards, after like a month or two following Doug's recommendations, I started asking for him, who should I study? And he said the medical vegan doctors like Clapper, McDougal, Warnish, Campbell, but I also study Herbert Shelton in natural hygiene. And I, it, it was studying Herbert Shelton and Doug was the best thing that ever happened to me. So I did like a 24 day water fast, six months after starting, starting a frugivore diet. And that was it. I, I was so, I, it was the best feeling ever in my whole life. And I, I was going to do this for my entire life. So I dedicated my, my life to teaching natural hygiene principles and natural hygiene to the world. And that that's what I'm doing nowadays, right? I, I wrote 10 books, I created online courses, I run retreats. And for 17 years, I haven't had a sore throat, even a sick day or anything like that. It has been a blessing. So oh, wow. for a really sick child, underperforming in everything like sports and in school to become a high performer, uh, you know, like to create a company, a health company. I, I, I learned like several different sports. I did a 40 day water fast last year, you know, like that yeah, life couldn't be better, but you need to have the right information. I think so. Do you think uh, fasting is necessary for everybody? Yes and no. Everybody that lived the, the modern, uh, also like Western lifestyle, for sure. And everybody could uh, improve with fasting. It's not that fasting is necessary. It's just that fasting allows the body to do some things, allows the body to regenerate and to rejuvenate a lot more than even the best diets can do it. You know, it's like trying to repair a car 
without stopping on the garage. It's pro it's primarily impossible, right? You have to stop it on the garage, give to the, the mechanic, and you know, like do your thing. So that's just what fasting does. You you slow down and let the body. Uh, for example, I I had a really terrible back issue. The diet helped a lot. The lifestyle helped a lot. But in these 16 years of perfect lifestyle, almost nearly perfect, mm. even long fasts, like I did 124, uh, another 23, another 19 days, 15 days, several of 10 and seven days, a lot of, you know, smaller fasts. But these this 39-day water fast, it healed my back more than anything else that I ever did. Oh. So it, it's like... Fasting is secondary. People don't understand that because if you just focus on fasting that most people try to do when they're really sick, but forget to study and apply natural hygiene to learn how to apply natural hygiene to your whole life, that's the most important part. You need to understand that the, the, the lifestyle modification is way more important than fasting. But for sure, fasting do things that you know nothing else could do. And you can, I did repair more my, my back. I can feel more, like my back is more uh, rigid, more uh, straight. My jaws, I used to have such a, uh, what, what, is, what do you guys call when you uh, clench your teeth? The, the, oh, the grinding, like grinding? Yeah, yeah. We have the name for the disease in Brazil, right? It's Bruchy. TMJ, maybe? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so... I used to have that a lot, and now it's practically gone. So even living perfectly for 60 years, uh, it was not enough to repair some of the damage that I have done for 22 years of my first 22 years of cooking for industrialized food, right? Yeah. So it, it, the, the, the longest, my longest fast, like the 39, was almost 40 days. It was uh, pretty impressive, but I think the most important part that people most focus on is in, in adopting a natural hygiene lifestyle. And it's like people don't realize what that is because most people that go into raw foods, and I did the same back then, I didn't know what chronobiology was. I didn't know what chrononutrition was. I didn't understand about like a lot of details of lifestyle medicine, right? So nowadays I understand because the science is out, out there and I have a lot more experience with it and i attend patients you know i have clinical practice as well so you get more experience with everything but like for example now nowadays i don't have my blue lights on at, at night it's oh, like God. the craziest thing it's like the craziest thing ever i have dinner always around 6 p.m 6 30 p.m you know i have earlier dinners so it's a lot of details that people you know don't realize it have you heard of Arnold Errett as well? He he kind of yeah. talked about uh, you know the 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 only reason chiropractors are really needed is because your back is out of place because there's something going on. There's a constipation within the body. For sure, for sure. Yeah, nowadays we we know the uh, lumbalgia, uh, the back, lower back pain is actually uh, caused by clogging of your arteries. Because your coronary artery, the, the, the artery that comes out from your uh, heart, is actually pretty big. But the more peripheral you have, for example, if you go to your hands, there are small vessels. I don't know the name in Portuguese, in English. Uh, there's small vessels, and then there's micro vessels, mm -hmm. right? My, my, micro, uh, micro arteries, really, really tiny arteries that travels the blood to every part of your body, right? Yeah. So the smaller the, the artery, the smaller the vessels, the, the capillaries, I think is the capillaries. Yeah, capillaries, the, yeah. uh, the smaller the capillaries, the easier it is to get clogged with uh, saturated fat, cholesterol, you know, like, so there's disc degeneration in lower back pains. So people eat a lot of fat, they have cardio, they have vascular disease, not just ca cardiovascular disease, but vascular disease. Because when you live the usual lifestyle, your arteries become inflamed. 
So the vasoconstricts, mm -hmm. they, they are like uh, uh, rigid and tough and don't, don't allow the blood to flow through them, uh, through, through where, where he should. So the blood doesn't go directly to the lower discs and the lower disc get uh, ischemia. It, yeah. it, it actually died for lack of blood and nutrients and oxygen, right? So that's one of the main reasons of lower back pain. It's actually not, yeah, constipation for sure. You end up causing another issues, et cetera. But I think the most important one would be uh, healthy circulation. So I'm assuming you're t you do uh, low fat as well, like no oil? No oil. Never oil. I can eat more nuts and seeds if I want to, but like I, I don't mind that much. But for sure, no oil whatsoever, ever. You know, like, uh, you, you can use the oil from the nuts and seeds, just plant some cashews, you know, like, and throw on top of your food, you know, like, though, that's not a big issue as like a olive oil or anything like that. Yeah. So do you think macronutrients uh, matter? Do you think that's a big deal? Um, yeah, do, they do matter. But when you're eating fruits and vegetables primarily, right, the, the, the other parts, how can you eat a high-protein, high-fat diet if you're a fruit eater, right? Yeah. You understand that fruits and vegetables are the primary. Even if you're doing a starch-based diet, I think, I think we eat more starch-based nowadays, right? Yeah, lately I have been. But uh, so it, it's pretty simple, I think. You know, like people, we focus too much on the wrong things. It's like food combining. I I care about food combining. I think it's a it's one of it's an important thing, but it's not as much as exercise. You know, like uh, so people are on the raw food movement are focusing too much on micro managing details instead of macro managing you know like focus on going to bed earlier yeah the, you know a hundred years ago do they do you think that people were talking about macronutrients they, no. they, they just didn't have blue lights so they didn't have electrical lights so they were going to bed at 7 p.m yeah and that's why they were healthy you know they were much more healthy than we are like in, in the raw food movement, like trying to focus on details like macronutrients. So for sure, try to understand nutrition and use it in your favor, but get more, get real with the science because the science is focusing way more on being uh, physically active, being really fit, uh, sleeping earlier, having nice, Vitamin D levels, that's the main thing on, on, on lifestyle medicine nowadays, not just, you know, macronutrient profiles. Yeah, that reminds me of Cassius Funk, I believe is his name, the guy that uh, discovered vitamin D. He, uh, he he had people on like a million IUs of vitamin D back in the 1920s when he discovered this. And people were basically curing themselves of all kinds of diseases. And then the hospital systems were getting they were they were going broke because people weren't in the hospital beds anymore. So I think finding, you know, stuff like that is maybe a little bit more important than, you know, which we're, what we're eating. Exactly. One of the things that I, I, I changed a lot for the last what, five years, six years, maybe seven years, it was chronobiology and chrononutrition. Even though I was a hygienist, I know that was bad. There wasn't too much too much science. I don't know. So uh, what what was the big deal is I used to eat late at night, like have dinner at 8 p.m. I used to see too much blue lights and go to sleep at 10 p.m. When I started like trying to sleep at 8 p.m., 8.30, you know, have blue light filters, uh, turn off the lights of the house and have uh, circadian lighting, like a lamp, really a small lamp with like yellow lights, you know, like my health improved so much that it, uh, it was like, you know, stupid to just think about food combining or these small details of food and think that food is like the biggest deal ever. Because it is, you know, like uh, chronal disruption, as we call, it's correlated with every kind of chronic diseases. 
and uh, like thyroid thyroid dysfunction, uh, cancer, diabetes, heart disease, you know, autoimmune diseases. So it's one of the main important things that people don't realize is it's to chronosynchronize their blood brain to the to the sun. So you think that's so that's basically where you it sounds like you focus is this what what do you call a chrono chronobiology chronobiology so like time biology basically exactly exactly yeah. time biology yeah I focus on everything I think the whole is actually the big deal. I don't just focus on diet, but for sure, I, I feel better and I work better. And, uh, you know, I think a raw food diet or raw vegan diet would be the best one. But still, I exercise and dance every day. I go to bed earlier most of the days, you know, like I, 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 I for example, I have 350 fruit trees on my yard. Oh, wow. So, yeah, yeah. So, like, uh, being in nature, and interacting with plants is a really important part of health that people don't understand. Yeah. Right. So that that's my main message, I think, to uh, to the raw food movement, not just focus on the the, the diet part. I, I I mean I see that in my own father. He's got a uh, he he runs a, uh, a missionary basically with a, a like a farm, and he's always out farming and even during the winter time he's planning on the farms and you know farming and everything like that and he is 69 i think this year and he runs circles around most 20 year olds so you know but he's always gardened and i can i can definitely see that um that in him comparatively to his his siblings so i think that is uh, an important uh thing to do and i always tell people like even in this climate that we live in you can grow like potatoes and apples and pears and, and whatever what kind of fruit trees do you do you have uh i, I try to plant everything that you you can name them from really? i already the only thing i am sad that i cannot grow over here is durians i don't know why they die oh, really? yeah yeah it, although it's a tropical country like uh the, the soil, maybe the soil over here that I pl try to plant in, they are not growing well. I'm still trying to find a way to grow them. Yeah. But in, a anyway, besides of that, it's like, you know, like uh, mami sapote, chocolate sapote, uh -huh. chico sapote, uh, bananas, persimmons, uh, uh, papayas, you know, like uh, I, I, I'm just growing up. Uh, a piel de sapo melon. Yeah. I just saw it. That is, it's already huge. I I didn't even plant that. I just threw the seeds probably from a melon that I bought in the market. Yeah. And it's, and it's not like already this big. I was like, whoa! <laughs> you know, like it's so cool to go to walk around and like, whoa! I have a gift. You know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing like a green thumb. I guess what? So you work with people with this? Yeah, I went to to university, right? Because in Brazil, nutrition is a new university. Because most countries, nutrition is just like a, a, a small course for two years. Yeah. Here it's like almost five years of university. Oh, wow. It's, yeah, so it's a long course. And uh, so I attend patients as a nutritionist online or in private or in, also, or in an office, right? I run the retreats, uh, raw food retreats. I, I have like online courses so people can understand what to buy, how they buy, how to get cheap food, for example, uh, how to store it, uh, you know, how to prepare uh, like cupcake, for example, you know, yeah. how to prepare a, a cake, but without like sugar, oil, and anything like that, right? Because the raw food movement ends up like, Oil is okay. Uh, uh, sweeteners is okay. So the agave, shilitol, and you know, coconut oil, and blah blah blah. It ends up now. It, it would be better to eat some steamed broccoli yeah. instead of so much raw oil. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, a lot of the the raw fooders, a, a lot of them were getting way too skinny because they were trying to live on you know broccoli juice and and kale juice and. They weren't eating anything. And, I, you know, that was one of the reasons that I, I kind of came off of it, to be honest, is because I get so tired of just trying to live off bananas. So what do you what do you tell people, you know, to, to survive on? 
eat food. You know, like uh, the first recommendation for my patients, it's like people are not dying from cooking food. People are dying from eating industrialized food. So that's my main recommendation. Like, uh, for sure, I'm a raw fooder. I live primarily on fruits and vegetables, you know, like my, uh, until now, I already played tennis for an hour and something this mm. morning. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, pro I'm probably trying to exercise it after we, we end. But like, uh, Okinawa gets up to 100 years of age. And they steam, they cook their sweet potatoes. Like 70% of their diet is sweet potatoes. Yeah. I'm not suggesting that I endorse sweet potatoes yeah. or that I prefer them to fruits and vegetables. Yeah. But if you're not maintaining a really clean diet, cook the food. Don't, don't, don't worry about it. Yeah. Just cook real food, you know, like food that comes out from the ground. You just get it and cook it. And for sure, there are foods that are better. There are foods that are worse. The closer it is to a fruit and a vegetable, the better it is. For example, uh, squash. Squash yeah. is, it would be one of the best foods to, to cook. Why? Because it's a fruit vegetable. It's a starchy fruit vegetable, but it's still a fruit. Yeah. So most people don't realize that then we're, even if it's cooked, it would be better to be a fruit and a vegetable, right? So if, if you're going to cook something, cook a broccoli, cook some cauliflower, you know, like, or steam it, it's even better. So yeah. there's a, a lot of little bit of details to nutrition, but I think the main thing would be take out industrialized food, anything that was processed, reduce the amount of animal protein and increase the amount of fruits and vegetables in your diet. I think that's the main direction people should understand, right? But most people don't. They think it's like just black and white, but you know, it, it takes a while. It takes experience to, to get there. So I'm basically kind of hearing you say that the food isn't that important. And if you're finding, you know, your health is still not that, that good, that look at the exercise and the sleep habits and uh, some of the other habits and the, like the blue light, and that might be more important and the vitamin D. For sure. For example, I exercise every day for the last 17 years, besides the days I'm fasting, right? If I'm a lot of fasting, I don't exercise. But besides of that, for me, it's really important to exercise every single day. It's really important to be sleeping early and to have dinner early every single day. So it's it's like people on the there's a lot of followers on Instagram and TikTok that is always they're always questioning, like, my dad or my grandpa used to eat meat and he lived up for a yeah. hundred years. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, for sure. He lived up to a hundred years eating meat. But was he seeing lights, uh, watching Netflix at midnight? Yeah. You know, was he eating popcorn at 10 p.m.? No way. He, he was having, like my, my dad was an immigrant from Italy, right? During yeah. the World War, they, they immigrated from Italy to Brazil. Yeah. So that's why the name Corassa, because yeah. it's a talent sure name. So he, he was like, he didn't have electric lights. He, was, he, he saw electric lights when he was 20 years of age, when oh, he wow. come from the, yeah, when he come from the farm to the city, that's when he had the electric lights, that, that when he had a processed food, because back then for 20 years of his life, he didn't even have lights, you know, like he had to exercise every day. He had to go to sleep early every day. He had to have dinner early every day. So that's the main focus, right? That's what people don't understand and don't get it. It's like uh, food is an aspect, but it's just becoming the more important aspect because most people are eating completely crap. If they were eating, you know, cooked food, but whole foods cooked that it actually cooking is not whole doesn't make the food whole anymore but still that's another issue yeah. to talk yeah. but still like if if they were eating just cooked food out of the ground out of the trees that would be uh you know talking from the difference from cooking to raw is not that big from talking to sedentary to really active every day you know like so uh, that that that's my main issue. I think most raw fooders don't exercise, don't do strength training, don't know what chronobiology is, chrononutrition, the influence of petrochemicals, for example. You know, like if you 
I've been exposed constantly to uh, perfumes, uh, makeup, and things like that. We know the, the toxicity from uh, heavy metals and uh, dioxins, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 not great at all. I mean, I, I mean, if maybe that's why in the China study, I don't. Are you familiar with the China study? Sure. Yeah, I mean, maybe Seven, seventeen. It, it has been probably seventeen years that I read, but still, I, I'm, I'm yeah, familiar. yeah, yeah. I mean, I couldn't find any of the Chinese people with diseases, but maybe it was more because they just ate simple and they, you know, worked the land and they kind of went by the the time. Exactly. That's what I'm talking about. Raw food matters. Fruits and vegetable matters, but it it doesn't matter that much for people that are, are already living a healthy lifestyle. I, I'm pro of raw foods, and I want you, I, I want everybody to become a raw fooder. The world yeah. will be a better place. Yeah. But we need to start to focus on the the most important details, and at least improve, include more uh, raw foods on your diet, more fresh foods on your diet. But don't think that's the end all and be all. Yeah, I like the videos for my channel is always different topics because nowadays I see that I, I it's not good to talk only about raw foods. People are thinking about like how to quit sugar, right? They're not thinking about like how to go raw. Yeah. Like 99% of the people don't don't even know what a raw food diet it is. So uh yeah, I talk about like, you know, for example, I, I just recorded a video why I don't take medicine, right? There's a lot of research on the topic that if you eat plant-based, there's more and more research coming out that if you eat plant-based, you can reduce the use of uh, pills and remedies. So, uh, you know, like there, there's a lot of cool things to talk because I, I have a book on cancer, a book on diabetes, a book on fasting, a book on, on the a frugivore diet, and, you know, like maybe vegan fitness, for example, people don't understand it. For sure, you're going to get leaner and not as bulky yeah. with raw fruits and vegetables, right? But if you're more healthy in general. That's the natural look. So people are used to see a look that is like really huge and big just because they, you know, everybody eats high protein, they get steroids and things like that nowadays. Yeah, I mean, that's that was my back background from 99 until 2009, I did keto. And it, you know, it took a toll on me. Um, what do you think about uh, like uh, jumping on a trampoline? I know that's that's something that I've always been really into. I think it kind of combines uh, all aspects of, of exercise. Have you ever used that in your, what you do? Yeah, for sure. Like uh, I, I'm really, nowadays I'm really into tennis, right? Like oh, yeah. I, love, I love the sport and there's science coming out of, that tennis would be the healthiest sport ever. I, I don't know if it actually it is, but the research suggests that tennis increases the life lifespan 10 years instead oh, wow. of like, yeah. Soccer would increase 4.7 years. And for example, the usual sports like running, uh, swimming would be like just three years of increased hmm. lifespan. So uh, I usually suggest people to Focus on cross training. Don't train just one sport or just don't focus on one type of aspect. Focus on the, the whole. So that's what I do, right? I, I I focus on the whole. So for sure, trampoline is a it's a good one, but like I mean, don't let it be just the only sport that you do. Try to focus on tra strength training, cardio, you know, like uh uh, stretching and neurological training, like coordination, like tennis or racket sports. I mean, because in nature, you don't find these ergonomic handles and everything like that. W wouldn't it be, be better just to do something, I don't know, uh, in your local park or something like that? For sure, for sure. But like you have to think about it that in nature, we would have a lot, a lot of coordination aspects to walk, for, to walk on trees, right? To jump from one branch to the other and things like that. So, but yeah, I think that that is a detail, but like, I think in my humble opinion, the, the, the science goes to be the fittest you can be 
and also lift and jog and jog and lift. The cardiorespiratory is as important as the muscle part, as the muscle training, the 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 the, the weight lifting training, because there are myosins, there are like cells in the muscles that changes that produces uh, a lot of chemical reactions beneficial to our health. Right, we call them myosins. Yes, they used to use that as marketing uh, to sell protein back in the day. <laughs> yeah. I, I will ask you this: Do you think? that it's important to eat by the season. Cause I know I, uh, well, a friend of mine is really big into this and, and she eats uh, only foods that are, would be available to us in that climate uh, for, for, you know, per season. Do you think that um, that has any beneficial? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm a, my, my brother always jokes with me because I'm an Aquarius, right? Like the Zodiac sign. Yeah. So I'm really a rational guy, right? Like, so there's not too many science about it, like eating seasonally, right? Yeah. Because you can be on US, but the food's growing here. So we're just shipping, shipping to you guys and it's still in season, right? Yeah. Depending yeah. on the, pla the place of the earth. Yeah. So I think it's more important if the food is growing, if being grown properly or not. Because if the soil is right, like a, a, a regeneration, a regenerative agriculture, right? If the soil is healthy, the food will be healthy. Yeah. So I don't think the season mine as much as the soil. You know, like if the food is organic, if the food was picked quite close to being ripe, then I think it's more important than the season. Perfect. I, I think I'm going to end my questions here, but where do, where do people uh, find you and, and how do they, you know, they get right. some of your information? For sure. It's always Dr. Corassa, D-R-C-O-R-A-S-S-A. It's like uh, I'm a doctor in nutrition, so yeah. uh, and Corasa is my last name. So Dr. Corasa or Saúde Fugal, that means frugal health. I can send you the, I can type you. So, you know, D-R-C-O-R-A-S-S-A -S -S -A or yeah. S-A-U-D-A-F-R-U-G-A-L. Saúde Fugal, frugal health, it means in Portuguese. So these two, or the, the crazy guy that lives on fruit in Brazil, you probably find it, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, like, uh, <laughs> but, like, I have TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, uh, Hawaii, all the social medias, but I also have been starting to grow the social medias in English as well. Yeah. So you can find content, of my content, in uh, Dr. Parasa Raw Food Nutritionist. In YouTube and in Instagram and TikTok, I have an uh, account for my English uh, content. So you guys can follow me there as well. Okay. I'll put that all down in the description section so they can go check you out. But anyway, uh, thanks for stopping by. And this has definitely been a different style of getting healthy than I'm used to. It, it, but it does, it does make a whole lot of sense to kind of go back to your natural uh, way of doing things. Nice, nice. Glad, glad to be to be on, and hope to, we see each other uh, yeah. soon. And and I can record as well with you to my YouTube channel. Perfect. Sounds good.